Hello everyone, welcome to Indian Polity Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss about the revolt of 1857. If you take the revolt of 1857, it was an inspiration for many other revolts and movements in the country. Especially if you take the freedom movement, the revolt of 1857 was a milestone event. Okay. The revolt of 1857 is also known as the first war of Indian independence. So let us try to understand the various factors that, are, that has actually contributed to the revolt of 1857 or the, the factors that led to the uh, revolt of 1857. Let us try to understand that. The first one is the political factors. Okay. So what are the political factors that led to this uh, uh, revolt? The first one was the doctrine of lapse. Okay, doctrine of lapse. Lord Dalhousie was the, uh, the the governor general during that time, and during the his time period, he has introduced a particular policy which is known as the doctrine of lapse. So, what do you mean by doctrine of lapse? In the absence of a natural heir, the control of the kingdom will be transferred to the British government. So that means if a king and a queen he does not have a natural heir. What happens is the control of that particular kingdom will directly go to the British government. So that is known as the doctrine of lapse. The British administration has annexed many places during that time. So some of the examples are Satara, Jaidapur, Zambalpur. Okay, Satara, Jaidapur, Zambalpur, Bhagat, then Udaipur, Jhansi, Nagpur, etc. So all these places. They try to annex it through the doctrine of lapse policy. So, which is not acceptable for the the uh, the, the king or the the rulers of the, of the the princely states and the various kingdoms. Another important political problem was the abolition of titles. The the rulers were given certain titles in India, and those titles were abolished by the British administration. So some examples are Raja, Samrat, all those titles. They try to make certain changes or they try to make uh, abolish those titles. And that was also a humiliation for the uh, Indian rulers. And another important political factor is the direct annexation. So the British government, they try to annex it directly. So how they try to annex the, the places in a direct manner? Punjab was annexed in the year 1849. Awadh was annexed in the year uh, 1856. So what was the reason for uh, annexing Awadh? Awadh they have annexed because they claim that maladministration was rampant during that uh, area. So based on that, in the name of maladministration and corruption, they have annexed certain provinces. So basically what is the, the objective of the Britishers? They wanted to take the uh, ultimate control of the Indian uh, regions or the, the, the Indian kingdoms. So that is why they have done that. Apart from that, they have evicted uh, the rulers from their palaces and uh, Indian rulers were denied pension. Some of the rulers who got the pension, they, they actually denied it and high level of corruption in civil service, police and uh, judiciary. Okay, So there were high level of corruption in the uh, civil services by the, the British administration, the, the police department and also in the judiciary. So these are the important political factors that actually led to the revolt of 1857. Now what are the social factors that led to the 1857 revolt? Social factors. The social religious reforms. So as we all know that uh, the Indians were following certain traditions, customs and the uh, age old religious practices and all. During that time, the British are suddenly introducing certain uh, reforms into the society. So one such reform was the abolition of Sati in the year 1829, the widow remarriage in the year 1856 and also they have promoted the girls education. Okay, so all these were not acceptable for uh, many of the people during that particular time period because they considered these kinds of activities of the British administration as, a, as they are indulging into their uh, culture and their religious traditions. So they were against that. The people were actually against that. Then the second one is imposition of tax on religious property. Okay, in the religious property taxes were actually imposed. Then Christian missionaries were given financial aid and other support. The British administration, they were actually promoting the Christian missionaries and they were given financial aid and other support also. And they also introduced another act which is known as the Religious Disabilities Act. So during this time period, as we all know, there were a lot of uh, social evils existing in the, uh, in, in, the, in the society, especially like the, the caste system and all those aspects, those kinds of uh, exploitation and all. So many people, they actually 
converted to Christianity. So what happened was a new convert to Christian religion can inherit the ancestral property in a legal manner. Okay, legally they can inherit the ancestral property. So this was also uh, a problem for the uh, for the people. Uh, during that particular time period, those who are actually following the, the tradi traditions, customs, the religious beliefs uh, and all. So people were against it. Okay, people, They started protesting against these kinds of policies of the British administration. Now the economic factors. So definitely we discussed about the political factors, then the, uh, the social factors. Now the economic factors. What are the important economic factors? The Britishers, they tried to introduce many land reforms in the country. The, some of the important land reforms they have introduced were the Zamindari system, the Mahalwari system, the Rotwari system, etc. All these uh, systems were exploitative in nature and with this policy they were trying to get a lot of money, they were trying to make a lot of profit but the common people were actually suffering. Another important one was uh, the commercialization of agriculture. Okay, The agriculture, they tried to commercialize the agriculture especially by introducing a lot of cash crops okay then it resulted in exploitation of farm farmers because they wanted to make a lot of money through the uh, commercialization of agriculture and they exploited the farmers okay it was actually a suffering for the farmers then the policy of industrialization Okay, they declined the Indian handicraft industries. What happened was because of industrialization, missionary came into being. There were a lot of imports happening uh, in, in, the, in the country. So due to that, the Indian handicraft industries, they declined. Okay, it was actually a time for the decline of the Indian handicraft industry, which affected the people, uh, the local people uh, in a very large scale. So they also started protesting against the, uh, the British administration. Then the military factors. What are the important military factors that led to the uh, 1857 revolt? The General Service Enlistment Act 1856 was one of the reasons. So what was this act? It was mandatory for uh, an Indian soldier to work abroad which is not advisable for many people in the country because due to their religious traditions and customs it was a sin if you are actually crossing the uh, the sea okay if you are actually going abroad and by crossing the sea it was actually like a sin it was against the um, the, the cultural traditions so it impacted the religious and cultural beliefs of the soldiers Okay, it affected the morale of the soldiers when they they have introduced this General Service Enlistment Act, which made the soldiers work abroad, which affected the religious and cultural beliefs of the soldiers. And Indian soldiers were discriminated on the basis of their salary, promotion, pension, etc., and they were referred as or they were addressed as sepoys. It was a derogatory term which they have used to address the Indian soldiers, sepoys. That is why this uh, uh, the revolt of 1857 is also known as sepoy mutiny and that was actually a term given by the Britishers, sepoy mutiny. Then annexation of our turned the soldiers against the Britishers. The soldiers were really aggressive, they were highly unsatisfied and when the annexation of our happened, the, the soldiers turned against the Britishers and the provision of free postage was denied. There was a provision for pre free postage but this was actually denied for the uh, Indian soldiers and they, they become more furious, they become more aggressive, they, they become more rebellious in nature. So these are the important military factors that led to the 1857 revolt. Now what is that immediate factor? There is a trigger needed, right? For any kind of revolution, for any kind of uh, rebellion, there is a trigger is, which is very, very important. That trigger is the immediate cause. So the immediate cause was the use of Enfield rifle. The Enfield rifle they tried to introduce in the uh, in the Indian army and there was a rumor that the cow and the pig fat was actually used to wrap the cartridge of the gun which was actually against the, uh, the, the religious sentiments of the Muslims and the Hindus. So the Indian soldiers perceived it as a calculated effort to undermine their faith and they started revolting against the Britishers. So that was the immediate cause of the 1857 revolt. So uh, in this video we were trying to understand the various factors that actually contributed to the revolt of 1857. We discussed the political factors, the economic factors, the social factors, the, the military factors and the, the immediate cause for the 
the revolt. Hope you have understood this session. I hope the session was useful for you. If it was useful for you, please do share it with your friends. Please like and comment and also subscribe the channel.